In the last video, we were doing the ray optics on curved mirrors, on spherical mirrors. And this time I'd like to get more quantitative about it. So here I've already drawn a uh, um, array diagram for a case one situation, although it turns out it won't matter. <coughs> and I've drawn only two rays. I've drawn our central ray, which comes in angle in equals angle out here. And I've also drawn the ray that I alluded to in the previous video, goes right through the center of curvature, strikes the mirror, and there where it strikes the mirror, it's coming in, the normal goes right with that line. So it comes in an angle of incidence of zero, so it bounces straight back out. Now it turns out that we can uh, set up a proportionality between a couple different pairs of triangles. So the first proportionality that I would like to look at is this one here. Um, this triangle here that I'm highlighting in red is proportional to this triangle here. They're similar triangles. Um, these included angles have the same angle, right angle, right angle, so they are similar triangles. So this means that all the, that the heights here are in proportion. <coughs> and also this distance here is in proportion to this distance here. The other one that I would like to look at, I'll note here in sort of a greenish color is this triangle here is proportional, is similar to this triangle here. These two angles are the same by the uh, law of reflection, and these are both right angles here and here. So the, all the angles are the same, so those are also similar triangles. So if you set up the proportions on all of that um, and do it for each of the prototype cases, you'll come to, you'll come to two solutions. You'll solve for two things. One, you'll get that the focal length is equal to one half of the radius. If certain sign conventions are followed, which we'll get to in a moment. And the other thing you'll get to is what I like to call the most useful equation in optics. Officially, right now, we should be calling it the mirror equation. But when we do this with lenses, it will become the thin lens equation. It looks exactly the same. It says that if I add the reciprocal of the object distance to the reciprocal of the image distance, again, following certain sign conventions, this will be equal to the reciprocal of the focal length. This and the definition of lateral magnification are the two things that you'll go to the most, both with mirror optics and also with, with lenses. Now I've alluded to some sign conventions here, so I figured I should summarize those. And to be clear, there are more than one kind of sign convention out there, but the one that we're going to be using is called the left light convention, which is by far the most common convention. I mentioned this though because especially 100 level textbooks will sometimes make other choices of sign conventions which are valid. Let's say if you're looking on on a friend's textbook, that book may or may not be using the same sign convention that we are. So just be careful. So I'll make ourselves a little table of what's positive and what's negative. So the first column of this will be focal length and radius. Since the focal length is always one half the radius, the sign is positive if the mirror is converging, and the focal length and radius are negative if they're diverging. 
for lateral magnification and also our object and image height, if the thing is upright, it's positive. If it's inverted, it's negative. And for the object and image distances, oops, there we go. For the object and image distances, um, they are positive if the object or image is real and negative if they're virtual. So if the object, if the image is a virtual image, <coughs> that will be a uh, negative image distance. Um, if it's positive, uh, if it's a real image, that will be a positive image distance. In this class, we're only ever going to deal with real objects, but be aware that if you go on to more advanced study, Virtual objects are possible, they are, th they are a thing, but we will not be encountering them in this class. We'll see that even a virtual image can be a real object in, in a, when you're doing a sequence of lenses. So in this class, all of our object distances will be positive. But be aware in more advanced treatments, you can get to more pathological situations where they're negative. Okay. So when you're going around trying to solve a, uh, any kind of optics problem, my first recommendation is to always draw a ray diagram. And this for the very practical reason that if you draw it to scale, it is the answer. You can just draw it all proportionally, measure it off. It is a totally valid way to calculate things. Um, Make sure to dimension the drawing carefully um, and apply the sign conventions to each dimension. Then usually what you'll end up doing is solving the most useful equation in optics for whatever it is you need. And before you even start a problem, you should have already looked to see which of the four prototype cases um, that it matches with. And then make sure that your results match to that. So I figured I would end up this video by doing an example. Let's say that we have a, uh, we're going to put a three centimeter tall, whoops, and put a three centimeter tall object in front of a convex mirror. Now convex mirrors, I remember concave is in like a con in like a cave and convex is there to vex you. So this is going to correspond to a dive, whoops, well, let's draw it better. Um, this is going to correspond to a diverging mirror. Yeah, we'll do something about like, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. Um, so this bit of mirror there, that bit there. Make the rest of it go away. There we go. All right. So let's dimension it out. Um, in this example, we're going to say that the mirror has a 25 centimeter focal length. So the center of curvature was here. So this is the focal length and it's equal to minus 25 centimeters. Here, I should probably dimension that in. because the focal point is behind the mirror. Okay. And then we're told that the object is 15 centimeters in front. So let's go ahead and draw our object. And you don't have to stress about keeping the vertical on the same scale as the horizontal. So we'll say here that our object height is 
is equal to plus three centimeters. And I would like to know the final image position and height. So let me dimension in the object distance here. DO is plus 15 centimeters. All right, so let's just start by drawing the ray diagram. So paraxial ray, something like that going away from the focal point, something like that. Um, focal ray aimed towards the focal point. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Goes out parallel. And then finally, we should always check our work by drawing in the central ray, especially since it is our truest and bestest friend. Okay, something like that. Now, if you're not resorting to artistically and hyper carefully drawing it, just doing a rough, rude and crude drawing will at least give you a pretty good idea of what the final answer ought to look like. And if your answer differs significantly from that, then you should know to be suspicious. So, okay, let's backtrack our rays. Since this is a diverging mirror, we know that this is a case four situation. So we are expecting a virtual image. Okay, then we will check our work with the central ray. Again, hey, not too bad. All right, so there's our image, and the drawing is consistent. The ray diagram is consistent with us already having identified that this is case four. And although we don't necessarily know the exact numbers, just looking at this, we're going, eh, if this is three centimeters, that looks like two-ish. I'm not expecting to get exactly two. In fact, the answer won't be exactly two. But if it isn't close to two, then I should be maybe a little worried about that. Um, same logic here, since we said this distance here is 15 centimeters. This looks to be about two thirds of it. So I'm expecting the image distance um, to work out to be, and we know it's gonna be negative. We don't know what exactly, but I'm expecting around negative 10-ish centimeters. And again, it won't be exactly that, but just looking at the drawing, that's sort of the feeling that you get from the drawing. <coughs> okay. Now, let's go ahead and do the algebra and see if it matches our drawing. So we'll start, let's just leave this here. Okay. So we'll start by using the most useful equation in optics to locate the image. So one over DO plus one over DI equals one over F. And we're trying to solve for DI. So we can rewrite this as one over DI equals one over F minus one over DO. Now I'm gonna to need to take the reciprocal of this. So probably best to put it on a common denominator. So this will be DO minus F over DO times f. Okay. So I can invert that to get that di is equal to do f over do minus f. Now super, super important here. When you're putting in your values, you got to put in the signs with them. So do we said was 15 centimeters, so plus 15 centimeters. <coughs> Our focal length is negative 25 centimeters. And you absolutely got to keep that minus sign. Same deal here. DO is again plus 15 centimeters and this would be minus a minus 25 centimeters. Okay. So this is going to be a negative number, which is good because we're expecting a virtual image. So let's be minus 9.375 centimeters. 
And looking at our diagram, we thought 10-ish centimeters, negative 10-ish centimeters, so negative 9 and 3 eighths, eh, that doesn't seem too bad. All right. Now, as far as getting the image height goes, we can say that we know that the magnification is equal to um, di over do by definition. And we also get from that same similar triangle stuff that is equal to, oops, my bad, minus, I'm sorry, the magnification is hi over ho. And we get from that same similar triangle stuff that's also minus di over do, which we had seen before when we were doing the plane mirror. All right, so from this we can get that the image height is minus di do times the object height. And again, you can't drop that minus sign. You can't drop that minus sign. You got to carry them all. So this is minus a negative 9.375 centimeters. Our do is plus 15 centimeters times our object height, which we said was plus three centimeters. Remember plus because it's upright. Oops, sorry about that. So we get for our image height when you crank it through that it is minus, I'm oh, sorry, my bad. It is plus 1.875 centimeters. So one seven eight centimeters. We were expecting it to be two-ish and the plus sign means it's upright. Okie dokie. And with that, I will catch you in the next one. Have a good one.